In module four, we are going to work with fMRI data. Along the way, you will learn about some important topics in MRI research, including how to interpret flat maps and a bit about visual receptive field mapping. And in the MATLAB parts of this video, I will introduce you to some image processing, in particular smoothing, some statistical analyses using t-tests, and of course, that's in addition to learning more about indexing, loops, and data visualization. But let me start by saying a few things about the fMRI signal. fMRI is a technology that uses a really big magnet that you go inside of to measure changes in oxygenation levels in the brain. Now, there's a complicated physiology that underlies this process, but the basic idea is that as neurons become more active, their metabolic need increases, and that triggers a local blood flow response. That's called the hemodynamic response, and it's also called the BOLD response, or BOLD stands for blood oxygenation level dependent. Now, neural activity isn't just you know a one-dimensional thing. There is synchronous and asynchronous firing, different types of cells, oscillations, single spikes and bursts, synaptic activity, and so on and how each of these different processes is related to the fMRI signal is not entirely understood, but fMRI is a remarkable and transformative technology. Anyway, the basic idea of the hemodynamic response is that after some large change in neural activity, for example, arising from a visual stimulus, there's an increase in the hemodynamic response and then a return to baseline. Now notice the time scale here is over many seconds compared to the time scale of neural activity, which is in the order of tens to hundreds of milliseconds. Now you'll get to see a time course that looks just like this in a later video. So this is what a time course looks like for one voxel. Of course, with fMRI, you would measure many, many voxels, hundreds of thousands of voxels throughout the brain. Then by quantifying this response for each voxel, we can generate an anatomical functional map that would look something like this. Now I'm going to tell you briefly about retinotopy and visual eccentricity and how those are processed in the brain. Retinotopy means that there is a direct relationship between the physical location on your retina when you're looking at something and the physical location in the visual cortex where information from the retina is processed. So for example, if you look at the center of this colorful circle, then we would be able to determine which fMRI voxels in the brain are maximally sensitive to which pixels in this image. So you can see from this slide that as the information gets further away from the retina, that information in the brain is processed further away from the occipital pole. Now in research experiments, this is often measured by having a ring that looks something like this, that's flickering at different distances from the origin. And these distances are called eccentricities. And in fact, this is what we are going to be examining in the data set in this module. Okay, now this is a pretty nice and easy to interpret way to visualize the fMRI data, but it only shows the inside of one half of the brain. So therefore, another way to visualize MRI data, which is often done in vision research, is to use what are called flat maps. So flat maps are conceptually easy to understand, but they're pretty confusing to interpret until you get used to them. So if this is your first exposure to flat maps, then don't worry if it seems a little hard to figure out at first. So the idea of creating a flat map is to inflate the brain until all of these sulci pop out. It's a bit like having a wrinkly balloon and then you blow into it until it becomes smooth. So that part's not so bad. The flattening part gets a little weird because what you have to do is cut into this brain and flatten it out like a sheet kind of like creating a realistic 2D map of the world by cutting up and flattening a 3D globe. Here's another picture that illustrates this concept. So here's the anatomically accurate brain, and then it's inflated and warped and then cut and flattened. So all these thick purple lines go across the same regions, 
in these different images here. Now the data that we will work with in this module are already flattened, so we're gonna start with images like this. In fact, the data set we'll have here doesn't even include the entire brain, it's really only the visual cortex. So we're just gonna get this area of the flat map. The data that we will be working with are a bit of data, so it's some sample data that come from this paper. Now this paper introduces some advanced analysis methods that I'm not going to cover here. But it's a nice, simple data set that is amenable to our teaching goals. The experiment was really simple. The research participants viewed a set of rings that had this kind of zebra-like animated pattern on top of them, and there were different eccentricities. So here you see three examples of the stimuli. In total, there were six conditions that varied from the least eccentric to the most eccentric. In other words, the closest to the origin or to the fovea and the furthest away from the fovea. Here you see a little bit of data that we are going to produce in a later video in this module. So these are the flat maps from the six different eccentricity conditions. The concavity here, this concavity, corresponds to primary visual cortex, and you can see that the fMRI signal in red moves further away from the calcarine sulcus with increasing condition number, which means increasing eccentricity, in other words, further away from the fovea. In fact, this is just one frame of a movie, an animation that we are going to create. It's gonna be pretty neat. In fact, this whole module is pretty cool. I hope you are also excited about it. So with that, let's get started. In the next video, we'll do some data visualizations. And after that, we will do some signal processing. Then we will explore the experiment design and create some event-related bold matrices. And then we'll do a little bit more visualizations, including some animations. And we'll end with a simple but insightful statistical comparison between two different conditions.